Sorry, not sorry for the repetitive soundtrack in the countdown. Welcome all to our emergency remote transition taster session, hopefully giving you a complete flavour of what we would have been doing right now in person if we were allowed. I hope you're well and looking forward to normality returning in September. And September will mark the start of the next stage of your computer science experience with the start of your A-level. Now today, you're going to get some further information on the structure of the course, what to look forward to, plus some material from what we would have been doing on our taster session in the autumn and now if COVID hadn't ruined the opportunity, with links to resources you can try at home over the summer to give yourself a full taster. So first things first, we're looking forward to beginning your A-level journey with you, but it's important that you start the course in the right frame of mind and for the right reasons. To be successful on this course, our experience shows that students with grade six or more in GCSE computer science can do well. It's not a guarantee, but students below this tend to struggle. If you didn't study GCSE computer science, then students with grade seven or more in maths tend to have the logic and numeracy to cope with the course. And while you will have further to travel than those who studied the subject to GCSE, enthusiasm for technology and good work ethic will get you through. A concern some people have is that they'll need to upgrade or replace their PC at home to cope with the course. No, you won't. If you have a device capable of checking your email on a web-based platform, you'll be able to do most of what you might need to do at home. For example, whilst a Mac or PC will allow you to install Visual Studio to use at home, more details on that later, you can use web based programming tools for most of the course. Having a modern browser is the key requirement on a tablet or a computer or even your smartphone if your eyesight is good enough. Basically, if it runs YouTube, you're fine. So a brief overview of the actual course content to get you excited to get started. Sure, there is new content, but most of it consolidates and builds on the work studied at GCSE. The A-level OCR course runs a very similar structure to the OCR GCSE course. Unit 1 covers the insides of the computer and applications of computing out there in the real world. We cover an extension of the von Neumann CPU architecture. We look deeper at memory and storage, um, functions of the operating system, how software is constructed, written and translated into executable code. We look at how databases are built and used, how networks like the internet work, and how HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are used to build web content. We deepen your understanding of binary and logic, and also learn how to construct data structures to hold complex information. We deepen your knowledge of the ethical, cultural, environmental, and legal issues involved in the development of computer science, building on that part of your GCSE course. Unit 2 focuses on aspects of coding strategies and algorithms. We look at computational thinking again, showing different ways to simplify and break down problems, including considering new concepts such as when programs run on many processor cores at the same time. We deepen our understanding of programming methods, ensuring that all students are at least bilingual, adding to any program prior programming experience with a new brand new language. We learn about what it means for a problem to be computable, and how we can express the efficiency of algorithms and compare them. We try out practically and understand some coded solutions to common algorithms like searching, sorting, working with data structures like trees, queues and stacks, and practical algorithms such as how to find the shortest path between two points on a map. Most students begin our course with a knowledge of at least one programming language, typically Visual Basic, Our Choice at NKS or Python. Some students have explored other languages such as JavaScript or C++. We produce a level playing field with the study of C Sharp, a language which opens doors to real app and game development in the future. We run through the same methods studied at GCSE, adding layers of complexity, including new ways of storing data like tuples or object oriented methods. All along this route, we teach and encourage good practice in writing and designing code. Now, unit three is the highlight of the course for most students, the chance to put your theory and knowledge into practice with development of a real app solution to a problem. The aim is to help a real person solve a real problem. You first of all, analyze their requirements. You design a workable solution. You plan out how you can possibly test that solution. You then build the app and then you test it and finally evaluate your final product. A lot of work, but started very early in year 12, so 
produced gradually over about 15 months. So with the overall course structure under our belts, let's get on to our two taster practical examples. Now you'll find materials used here on a OneDrive folder at the link shown at the top. So try and note that down at this point. Now our first example is linked to the logic learned at GCSE. You learnt three logic gates, and, or, and not. They each take one or two logical values, either true or false, and they output a single logical result, true or false. So for example, or produces a true result if either or both of the inputs are true, and only false if both inputs are false. Now, one of the things you'll notice at A-level is that we take concepts that you do at GCSE and we link them together. So let's link what we've just said to another part of your computing theory, the idea of adding binary numbers together. So consider the sum 42 plus 13. The answer in deanery to that sum is 56. So we can represent the 43 in binary by combining some of the powers of two so 32 and 8, that gives you 40, and then the 2 and the 1, that gives you the extra 3, so 43. So that's 101011. 13 is made up of 8, 4 and 1. So we represent 13 as 1101. Now we can column add these numbers together. And doing that, we generate the correct total of 111000, made up of 32, plus 16, plus eight, giving 56. Now, obviously we can do that by hand, but it'd be really handy if we could produce a computable way of doing that automatically, possibly even electronically. Now, for each column we add when we're doing binary addition, we could either have two zeros, which would give a sum of zero underneath. We don't end up carrying anything. Or we could have a single one and a single zero in either order giving a sum of one and no carry. Or we could have two ones, giving a total of two. And we would write the sum digit zero directly underneath that column and then carry a one this time to the next column. Now, if you look at these results, you may notice something familiar about the pattern of the carry. It's the result of the logical operator and between the two digits we added in that column. The sum column is a bit more complicated, but it does look a little bit like or, except that when we have two ones as input, we get zero instead of a one. Now, this is actually a valid logical statement. It's actually a valid logic gate called an exclusive or, or X or. And the beauty is by doing that analysis, we can actually build a circuit that will add two binary numbers together. And to do that, we use a web app called Logically to try. OK, so if you load up Logically and then click Try Online, we can use the panel on the left hand side to build our circuit. Now for the ones and zeros as input, we use switches. So I can pull a switch and drop it on the work area, grab a second switch and drop that on the work area as well. And we can use a light bulb to represent the output. So if I connect this switch just by clicking and dragging directly to this light bulb, you'll see that switching the switch on immediately feeds a one into the light bulb. So we can consider the switch being on and the light bulb being on as representing a one or a true. Selecting an item and then pressing the delete key on the keyboard will get rid of it. Now I'm going to use an additional light bulb to represent the carry into the next column. And we said that the pattern of results for the carry almost exactly matched the and. So here I can grab an and gate, go and place that down up here and wire up these switches as the input to the and gate and the output, I can connect that to the carry. We also mentioned that the sum at the bottom of a column was represented by a gate that's very similar to OR. Here we have OR. Below that, you can see XOR, the exclusive OR. And if I grab one of those and again, wire up my circuit, so the two switches go as input to the XOR, and I pick up the output, and connect that to the light bulb at the bottom, you'll notice zero and one gives me a one. One and zero gives me a one, but if I have both these inputs on, it gives me a two. Now this combination of an and and an XOR produces what we call a half adder. 
It's a circuit that takes two inputs and generates two outputs, the sum and the carry. But what if we wanted to add two more switches for, for the next column of numbers? Now in this second column, we now have two inputs plus a third input, the carry. We've actually got three numbers to add together, but we should be able to wire this circuit up to produce another sum at the bottom and potentially an extra carry onto the next column. And the circuit that takes all three of these inputs is obviously more complicated. It's called a full adder. But if we were to build that circuit down here, we could wire it up so that this now allows us to add together two two-digit numbers and generate a two-digit and a carry response. So this is a half adder. And your challenge is to look up the circuit for a full adder and see if you can wire this in. In past taster sessions, we've actually had students generating a third bit and a fourth bit and producing multiple full adders that take the next carry, add it in, take the next carry, add it in and so on. A little insight into the logic gates that can be combined together in an arithmetic logic unit to actually add binary numbers together. So use logically and a few web searches to see if you can build an example. Our second taster example is the chance to play with C sharp, our language of choice. Now in school, we use a virtual box virtual environment with Windows 10, in which you can code using a full Visual Studio development environment. You can store Visual Studio at home, but you can also begin to explore this language free using an online development tool called .NET Fiddle.net. It's a tool we've used at GCSE and particularly during lockdown with Visual Basic, but it also works with C Sharp too. So as before, the sample code you can see on the left is available in the folder linked above. So the idea is to try that code out, see what it does. Try and predict in advance what you think it will do and then have a little bit of a look and see if you're right. Adjust the code, have a play around. Now, if you want to learn more about C Sharp, we recommend the W3 School C Sharp course, again linked in the document in the folder above. You don't need to teach yourself C Sharp over the summer, but it's a really good idea to just get a little bit familiar with the way the syntax looks and the way things work. It will make things a lot easier for you. So I do hope this has inspired you to try out some of the materials and explore further. We do hope to see you in September in our new home in the new digital learning centre at the very front of the school. A very exciting new beginning for the start of your A-level course. OK, folks, well, thanks for watching. Um, I hope that the uh, presentation has been useful and the details of the, uh, of, the, of the meeting information I've published in the Q&A. So if you press the Q&A, you'll be able to see the link and actually click on that. And that would should take you to information that you can use to back up you know, the, uh, the stuff you've seen. There's also a link to a YouTube version of this presentation. Uh, should you have missed the end of the uh, of the presentation um, and the idea really is to have a little bit of go of those tasks um, try particularly the visual basic and have a little bit of a look at some some interesting ideas because the page that I've linked to on the on the link uh, is a live page if there's any questions that come through by email or any bits of information or requests for resources I will put a link directly into that page so that page is a live word document and i can add material into there um, the thing i'm going to add into there is a link to w3 schools which i think i mentioned um, in there about the, uh, the the vb course obviously you can google search that but it does mean that you can um, hopefully um, directly linked to the VB course on there through a link that I'll add probably in a few minutes. So thank you very much for for, appear, for appearing and apologies if um, some of you are hearing this having started the session a little bit late and then gone back and watched it again. And obviously that means that you won't have been able to catch any Q&A questions uh, into the into the chat before I obviously I'm doing this element live um, but the main part of the presentation was pre-recorded so you can actually go back and have a little watch again really hoping that you join us in September and I'm um, looking forward to seeing you in our brand new building really exciting and uh, otherwise have a fantastic summer and uh, yeah see you guys later